since we know how to find critical values and we know the general theory for confidence intervals, it's time for us to put it all together and find the confidence interval for a proportion from beginning to end. And also learn a lot about confidence intervals for proportions along the way. So we have this box here that has all sorts of important formulas and information for us about making a confidence interval for a population proportion. This little piece right here is for a TI-84 calculator. So if you're on a TI-84 calculator, that's the calculator instruction, the calculator command that you would use. If you're not on a TI-84 calculator, don't worry about it. <laughs> all right, and obviously the formulas are right here. It's the same formula, just written two ways, because it's the p hat, which is your point estimate, plus or minus your critical value times your standard error of your p hat. And we learned in chapter 8.2, section 8.2, that the standard error for p hat is the square root of p hat times q hat over n. Of course, all of that is only true if we have the central limit theorem requirements met to construct that interval for p. In other words, we have to have a random sample, as always, because otherwise we have bias. We have to have a sample that's independent of the population. Now, if you're sampling with replacement, that's no problem. It's automatically independent. But that's pretty rare. Usually we're sampling without replacement, and so we would need n to be less than 0 0.05 capital N. So you want a small enough sample that nobody knows you took it, but you want it to be big enough that n times p hat times q hat is greater than or equal to 10. And remember, of course, that q hat is 1 minus p hat. You could make a little note, right? Because it all comes from the binomial distribution. So q hat is the probability of failure, which is 1 minus p hat, which is the probability of success. Although these are proportions, so it doesn't quite work that way, but it, it, the formula definitely works that way. Now, this entire box is written for you right here on your exam notes packet. So it's all right there everything you need. So you don't have to write it again on your own note sheet for the exams or anything. All right, so a YouGov poll from October 2019 found that in a random sample of 1,293 adult Americans, 46% of them believe ghosts de either definitely exist or probably exist. We want to know the true proportion of all adult Americans that believe in ghosts. There are 210 million Americans, uh, excuse me, million adults in the U.S., Actually, I think that number is more accurate. I think it should have said 210 million back on example one <laughs> instead of 250 million. That's okay. 210 million, I believe, is the current number right now. Of course, by the time you're watching this, it might have become 250 million. Who knows? All right. So what was the sample and what was its size and what is the population and what is its size? So the sample was random adult Americans and its size was 1,293. So random adult Americans and the population then would be all adult Americans so it's the 210 million adult adults in the US right so it's all of them I guess I could say all 210 million adult um, 210 million adults in the US all right, so let's verify that the conditions are met in order to be able to construct this confidence interval. This is something we only do generally if it's asked of us. We don't do this all the time. So only verify conditions, only verify if the problem asks for it. But this problem did ask for it. So we will. And this is a review of chapter eight. This is section 8.2, right? It's those conditions that are written right here, also known as requirements, right? This is section 8.2, right? All right, number one, random. Well, it's given. So it said right in the in, um, instructions right here, it says random right there. So this was given to us. It was written in the problem. It almost always is. If it's not given, it's usually just safe to assume. All right, number two. This is the hardest one, I think. Independent. Okay, we were sampling without replacement. So we need our sample size, which is little n, to be less than 0.05 of capital N. Little n was 1,293. 
we need that to be less than 0.05 of 210 million. Well, 210 million, which is 210 followed by six more zeros, multiplied by 0 0.05 is whatever that is. <laughs> I'm going to write it out. One zero five and then five zeros. So that'd be uh, oops, five zeros. So that would be ten million five hundred thousand. And therefore, sure, <laughs> right? One thousand two hundred ninety-three is definitely less than ten million five hundred thousand. So this is a yes. But you have to show that work. If you, if the number is given to you, if the number is not given to you, then you just kind of say yes, of course, right? You write out what this is in words. You'd say all adult Americans. But we happen to know that's 210 million or thereabouts. Normal. Okay, to get normal, we need N times P hat times Q hat to be greater than 10. N was 1,293. And I'm going to multiply that by P hat. Well, we better find P hat. P hat is right here. That's the sample from our sample proportion. So I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.46. And if you like, you can use the math person trick of putting it in parentheses. <laughs> and then I need the complement of that. So I need 1 minus 0 0.46, which is 0 0.54. Right? They're complements of each other. They add up to 1. And if you don't believe me, here, 1 minus 0 0.46, 0 0.54. So you can write a little note to yourself. Right. This is 1 minus 0.46. Okay, so I need to multiply all these. That's a multiplication dot. So I'm going to multiply these three things times each other. So 1,293 times 0 0.46 times 0 0.54, and it becomes 321. And 321 is greater than 10. So this is a yes also. We have verified all three requirements. So we verified that it's random because it said so. We verified independent. And usually this one's tricky because often that number there is not given, that 210 million. So you have to just kind of wave your hands at it like a magician and just say in words what that would be and say how much smaller your sample size is than that multiplication. You just be like, yes, it's a lot smaller. And then here we can actually put these numbers in. So you have to find that 0.54 and then you multiply n times p hat times q hat and sure enough, it is greater than or equal to 10. Okay. Next. Oh, this is a little bit of a math question. <laughs> I mean, they're all math questions, but this is a little bit like an algebra question. How many? How many is a number, right? You're looking for a whole number. We know that p hat is x over n. We learned that in section 8.2. It's one of the basic formulas. And for our problem, p hat was 0.46. We just said it right above, right? So p hat was 0.46, and n was 1,293. So what they're asking us to do is they're asking us to solve this for x. How many, right? How many successes divided by how many trials, right? It's very much the binomial distribution. So we just multiply both sides by 1,293. Because whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. And you're doing multiplication because that's the opposite of this division that's in here. So let me grab my calculator. 1,293 times 0 0.46 is 595. Well, it's 594.78. But the problem is you can't have 0.78 of a, of a success here. right? This is discrete, right? You either have 595 people or 594 people that believe in ghosts. You can't have 0.78 of a person believing in ghosts. Right? Either they believe in ghosts or they don't. So we round to 595 um, people believed in ghosts in our sample. That's a review question. As a matter of fact, this whole page so far is review questions. This right up here is review from chapter one, right here, sample, population, size. This is review of chapter eight, right here. 
the random independent normal thing. And this is actually also review of chapter eight. We've done this before where you're solving for X. 